So B, the letter B is for Bible. Obviously a central part of any church, any faith. And in our churches we have a lot of very interesting Bibles. Uh, at All Souls they have a copy of the first printed Bible in Belfast, printed by James Blow. And I got to know that Bible very well when I was minister there. And I had to take it down to Archbishop Marsh's library in Dublin, where, where they have a bindery, to have it uh, rebound and restored, uh, because it was really falling apart. But it was restored uh, at some expense and put back in its special cabinet, this first Bible printed in Belfast. And a clock, we have a very interesting Bible. It was actually printed in Edinburgh in 1793 and was presented to the congregation of Cloch by the Reverend David Watson. This was in 1837 when the new meeting house, that is this present meeting house, was opened. And there is an inscription in the front of the book which we can see. Written in the flyleaf of the Bible, it says, This Bible is the property of the members of the new Presbyterian House of Worship in Clock, which was open for divine service on the 9th of July, being the second Sabbath of that month, 1837, by the Reverend John Porter of the Second Presbyterian Congregation in Belfast. And this is written by... David Watson, the minister at Clark. But lots of people in our churches have their own family Bibles and these are often important sources of family information apart from anything else. But they, they tell the story of a book that's been passed down through the generations uh, within a family. I've got a couple of Bibles myself which belong to prominent ministers and I came across them both by chance. Uh, one is this Bible uh, which is the revised version of the Bible and it belonged to Alexander Gordon. Now I've done a, a film about him before, I'll put a link uh, in the description to that film, uh, but I, I purchased this Bible uh, I think for 30 pence when it was sold off as surplus to the requirements of a library. The revised version of the Bible was produced amidst much controversy in Britain in 1881 and the first American revised edition appeared in 1901, published in New York. And this was Alexander Gordon's copy of that Bible. And in the flyleaf we can see his signature, his distinctive signature. And the date, the 24th of September, 1901. And I was very pleased to see that it had belonged to Alexander Gordon. Uh, but uh, there's nothing more inside that would, would tell us anything about his thoughts or interpretations or translations. And the same, unfortunately, is true of this Bible. Uh, which uh, I was given by someone in Belfast who found it in their attic. And as you can see, it's a fairly unprepossessing looking book. It's got no covers. The print is tiny. It's very hard to read. And it was only after I was given it that I noticed it was also signed by the original owner. And the original owner was James Martineau. Now this Bible was published in London in 1818, which means it could have been in Martineau's possession when he was at school or when he was training for the ministry. And almost certainly it was in his possession by the time he was minister at Eustace Street in Dublin, where he ministered from 1828 to 1832 and who knows what happened to it after that 
it seems to have had a lot of use but uh, Martineau must have been must have left it behind uh, when he left Dublin but again you search in vain for some annotation or some little remark or some alternative translation or alternative uh, interpretation there are no markings in the book but it was James Martineau's Bible all those years ago because the important thing about a Bible is not who it belonged to or what it looks like really the important thing is what it contains and the Reverend Tom Bannum always used to say that the Bible is not the Word of God but the Bible contains the Word of God because we have to read the Bible we have to interpret the Bible we have to use all our skills to come to terms with what with what the Bible tells us and that is the whole point of our denomination it's the whole point of the Reformation it's up to us to engage with these uh, divine oracles and to discover for ourselves what they say for us for our society for our day and age so for the Bible to be understood we have to read it we have to read it with understanding first of all of course it has to be translated and then often it needs to be interpreted there are lots of ways we can aid our understanding of the biblical text but we can see this in the Bible itself and I'd like to read now from the book of Acts from chapter 8 starting at verse 26 Acts chapter 8 starting at verse 26 then an angel of the Lord said to Philip get up and go towards the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza this is a wilderness road so he got up and went now there was an Ethiopian eunuch a court official of the Candace queen of the Ethiopians in charge of her entire treasury he had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home seated in his chariot he was reading the prophet Isaiah then the spirit said to Philip go over to this chariot and join it so Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah he asked do you understand what you are reading he replied how can I unless someone guides me and he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him now the passage of the scriptures that he was reading was this like a sheep he was led to the slaughter and like a lamb silent before its shearer so he does not open his mouth in his humiliation justice was denied him who can describe his generation for his life is taken away from the earth the eunuch asked Philip about whom may I ask you does the prophet say this about himself or about someone else then Philip began to speak and starting with this scripture he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus as they were going along the road they came to some water and the eunuch said look here is water what is to prevent me from being baptized he commanded the chariot to stop and both of them Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptized him when they came up out of the water the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away the eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing but Philip found himself at Azotus and as he was passing through the region he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea and here ends our reading well, let's join together now in the fellowship of prayer as we say a prayer originally from the book of common prayer let us pray eternal God who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning help us to hear them to read mark learn and inwardly digest them that through patience and the comfort of your holy word we may embrace and forever hold fast 
the hope of an everlasting life. And these and all our prayers we ask in Jesus' name, who taught us when we pray to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us in this service. But let's close now with the benediction. Let us pray. Now may the light of God illumine our souls and the warmth of his love kindle a flame of devotion in our hearts. May his blessing now descend upon us and remain with us this day and evermore. Amen. <laughs>